Hello, everyone and everything, and welcome back to more Hollow Knight. In the last episode, we cleaned out Green Path. In this episode, it's onward to the Fungal Wastes, and I really like the Fungal Wastes. I wonder... Ooh, wow. I already got the entry for those things. Oh, no, that was a new enemy. <laughs> um... I'm fine. I'm not frazzled. I feel like I feel like the fungal waste is kind of a divisive area. It's very brown um, and kind of just feels noxious to look at, which is the point. But I, I like the atmosphere a lot. Straight down here at the start, we are going to kick it off with Cornifer. Always a good start to things. Ah, oh, my short friend, you've caught me at the perfect time. I'm just about finished charting these noxious caverns. Very territorial types make their homes within this area. I'd suggest avoiding them where possible. Further below, some strange thin creatures gave me quite a scare. They seemed an intelligent bunch. In my youth, I'd have braved their caves, but I fear my matured physique wouldn't be able to outrun them were they to turn violent. Purchase a map? Absolutely. Without question. Okay, we've got a very tall area to go through. Very circular as well, it seems. Let's carry straight on. The geo rocks in this area look like mushrooms. Um, that's something that's just a great little attention to detail in this game, is that the geo rocks in just about every area have their own identity. You can see another one down there also looks like a completely different mushroom. And something else further from that is we have seen remarkably few repeat enemies so far we've seen like one or two in similar areas like vengeflies reappeared in green path but past that every single area has a brand new suite of enemies we've got this door here with a lever on the far side and a wall that we have no means of scaling so it looks like this area is a dead end for the moment I have to... I didn't acknowledge these bouncy mushrooms, but they are so much fun. They are, like, one of the best things about the nail pogo. You'll bounce just like this, really short, if you don't hit them, but when you hit them, you go flying upward. It's so satisfying. And another, another really good area to just sort of practice the timing of the nail pogos. Apparently I'm lost. Okay, there we go. <laughs> How to jump... These big guys uh, are really tanky, and this one's going to stay out of my reach, so you know what? He can live. Away with ye. Ouch. These guys are very similar to the infected Moskin from the last area, where they will just explode. These big ones have absolutely no means of defending themselves from above. They will only shoot downwards. I think I can get up here. I sure can. There we go. Oh shoot, these things. Okay, uh, I'm just gonna run straight past because this is treacherous. These guys shoot explosive uh, spores, which do two damage. Orange explosions like that will always do two damage. And I could just run away, but I do want to beat them. Yikes! Okay. Whew. These guys are pretty susceptible to spells. Oh my goodness, okay. <laughs> We're gonna get through this. Scott free, we got this. Uh, maybe not this. Yeah, okay. Okay, did not get through Scott free, <laughs> that's okay. Um, if you can lure those guys' spores back into themselves and cause them to explode right next to them, the explosion is strong enough to kill those enemies in one hit. Which is a nifty, nifty way of beating them. Another one. Wow, that's actually a lot of hits. I think that was five. Over here, there's not much. Some sort of wooden egg from the look of things. We'll have to figure out what that's about later. And if we head upwards this way, there we go. So by using the uh, the spell <laughs> to break the spore. Whoops, well that didn't work. <laughs> you have to be facing the right way. That's important. 
Oh my goodness, this is so <laughs> this is so treacherous. When you have Ow, gosh dang it. You only have five health. Two is just massive. Another door with a lever we can't reach. Starting to feel like we're not welcome here. This is <laughs> it's time for the, the daily dose of just adoring the gatherflies. I love not having to just chase down Geo when it falls down below. So third door in a row blocking us from a direction. Another new enemies. These ones are actually really difficult. Uh, they've got two different attacks. They can dash forward or jump upwards. And avoiding it is just kind of inconsistent. These little guys, which you might not have even noticed, are... I, I believe the first enemy to be completely harmless. All they do is run away from you. Uh, I guess I guess if you count the mask flies as enemies, they're pre pretty similar. Uh, once again, the, the only reason to kill them is to fill up the monster journal. Or the hunter's notebook. Ow. I'm just going to face tank these guys every time. They're, they attack so fast that there's no real reasonable way to know which attack they're doing. Uh, so we can just run through them. Thankfully, they're not a boss. Otherwise, I'd have to create a whole guide on how that works. So we've now unlocked one of these doors. One down. Who knows how many of those to go. Up here, we'll find some interesting stuff. Nice statue of a mushroom. And another one. They're not statues. <laughs> if you're not fooled, that's that's probably for the best. These are called mushroom ogres. They're not bosses. Um, I would almost consider this a boss fight, though. They've got enough HP. But it's really simple. They each only have two attacks. This head slam and the sort of orange blah, whatever you want to call that. Um, as long as you just run away from them when they start doing the head slam and approach them when they do the spit, you can knock that out no problem. And we get one of the best rewards in the game just for that. A charm notch. We only had three charm notches to start the game. And this shows us that that's an upgradable total to allow us to uh, insert more charms as the game goes on, which is just a huge deal. I highly, highly recommend heading upwards here. We're going to find something so useful. First of all, a bench of sorts. It's actually the corpse of a bug, but you know, you take what you get. Fill up our map. I'll show you right now. We're right up here. We've, we've gone quite a bit upwards in our time so far. And we can see that we now have four notches as opposed to three. And we could put on the Wayward Compass or the Thorns of Agony if I so wanted. Oh, I'll keep the compass on just for this, the time being. And we have a new face here who's not aggressive. Leg Eater. Interesting name. Don't try to sneak up on me. I can smell you. Hmm? Do you collect lots of Geo? Give me Geo and you can see something nice. Pay to see something nice? Well, that's not too much Geo, so it could be worth it. Only 86. Let me show you then. Take a look. Do you want them? If you really, really want them, I'll trade them for more Geo. More Geo. This guy has really interesting charms. They're all three called Fragile. These are called the Fragile Charms. Fragile Heart, Fragile Greed, and Fragile Strength. Each of them gives an incredible upgrade. Fragile Heart will give us two additional masks just for having it equipped, and they will act completely as normal masks, not like the blue lifeblood masks that we've been getting from those blue cocoons. Fantastic charm there. Fragile Greed will increase the amount of Geo dropped by enemies by about 20% rounded upwards. So that will absolutely make it so you are rolling in money should you equip it. And Fragile Strength, the real prize, increases your damage by 50% unconditionally. That is absolutely enormous. And it's also rounded to the nearest even number. So right now with our damage at 5, that will increase our damage to 8 which is actually 60%. So that's just e 
enormous. I love these charms so much. There is a catch, however. The fragile aspect of these charms is not just a fancy poetic name. These charms can break, which is a problem. Should you die while holding one of these charms, they will become a broken variant of a charm, which has absolutely no effect whatsoever. They can be repaired by bringing them back to this guy, and he will repair them for a cost, but that is quite the detour, especially depending on where you are. So you have to be super careful when wielding these charms. But we are in Steel Soul mode. Which means I can't die without just losing everything anyway. So instead of there being really any drawback, we're basically immune to the negative aspect of this charms. Ow! <laughs> because again, we can't die anyway, otherwise we just lose everything. So the, the added sort of consequence of losing these charms is completely inconsequential. So I have gone ahead and equipped Greed, and uh, I'm going to use it to just get some extra money on our way up here. I will be using these charms fairly liberally, just because it's one of the biggest advantages of playing in Steel Soul mode is the fact that these charms will just basically come at no consequence. I remember my first playthrough of the game, I never used a fragile charm. I bought them, and I was like, these sound really cool and powerful, but like, I never wanted to risk them. I broke one the very first time that I had it equipped, and that was it. That was all that I was willing to do. I was like, nope, not going to do this again. Little dead end there. The palette here has once again shifted back to a dark blue that we may be familiar with. And if we head on up this way, we'll find ourselves back in very familiar ground, the Forgotten Crossroads. This is a really cool element of this game. It's pretty characteristic of a lot of Metroidvanias, but the map is going to twist around on itself and reconnect in areas that we've been to before. Here's the room that locked us in to fight some of these uh, Aspids. And we have come at it from a new direction. We can stop by the hot spring, fill up our soul just because we can. Hot springs are really rare, so I like to, I like to stop by them every so often just because. Give me all that extra geo. I love it. I love the money. So we're going to head over this direction. I'm going to meet you uh, over by where we fought the Gruz Mother. So I'll see you guys there in a sec. Okay, back in the room where we found Sly after beating the Gruz Mother. We're going to head off to the right here. Because there's a jump that we can now make ever since getting the Mothwing Cloak. And this is one of the most important Let's enter this little room. We find this rather heavy set individual. Ooh, you surprised me! Hello, hello! Welcome in, sweetling! Come in and make your yourself at home! I'm Salubra, and this is my cozy little charm store. Did the town folk out there tell you to come and visit me? Hmm? Mm, yes. This is a lovely little village, isn't it? Warm and intimate and full of life. Hmm, what were we talking about? Oh, yes! Charms! I can see you've started your own collection. Very nice. I'll show you some of my own, and you can take one home if you like. <laughs> Salubra sells charms, and quite a few really good ones. Uh, Lifeblood Heart will basically give us a renewable effect of those lifeblood uh, cores that we've been finding with the blue cocoons. Every time we sit at a bench, those will be refilled, which is very useful if you're finding yourself taking a lot of damage. 
long nail does just what it says on the tin there. It will increase the length of our nail, which is absolutely fantastic, giving us a bigger hitbox and more room to work with against enemies. Steady body will remove the knockback effect from our nail, making it so that we don't get hit backwards whenever we land a hit. Enemies will still be knocked back if they're susceptible to it, but we will instead be able to stand steady. I'm going to buy that one just because it's so cheap. And Shaman Stone, one of the best unequivocally. It increases the power of any spell that we use. How much it increases that power by varies, uh, but it is always an upgrade. And I am definitely going to buy that one. That's one of my favorites. But more than that, she sells Charm Notches, which are incredible. Uh, this first, uh, the amount of Charm Notches that are actually available to you are dependent on how many charms you've collected. This first one is available if you have collected 5, the second one if you've collected 10, and I just bought my 10th charm from Salubra themselves. So, I'm going to go ahead and buy both of these. It is absolutely a no-brainer. And we had just enough money to do that there, which is super, super nice. <laughs> Let's go ahead and see what else they have to say. Do you wear a lot of charms at once? It's a lot of fun, isn't it? Mixing and matching them to get the perfect combination. I don't know whether you've noticed, but some charms seem to like each other. Yes, mmm. When charms like each other, they shine even brighter and sing even more sweetly. Even more reason to try out all sorts of fun and surprising combinations, mmm. You'll show me whenever you have a new favorite, right? <laughs> I love Salubra. They're just such a huge personality. <laughs> this bench is absolutely beautiful, but I'm going to forgo sitting on it because I want to leave my current spawn point back down by Leg Eater, just because it's going to save us some time. While we're in uh, the Forgotten Crossroads, this would be a really good time to go in and check in on some of the old friendly faces that we've seen so far. So I'm going to go skip ahead and meet you guys by some of those. Our first stop is back at these purple mines that we found in the very first episode to find a familiar little miner still hacking away. Oh, hello again. Are you still running about? Why not join me down here? There's plenty of wealth in these rocks for anyone willing to put a bit of work in. Those crystals out there are worth a fair bit, but I have a feeling that there's something even more valuable hidden just a bit deeper in. I can almost smell it. Haha. <laughs> You're welcome to join me. There's enough for both of us. Or if you don't feel like d d d digging, you could just sit here and sing with me. <laughs> oh, bury the night with her broken nail. Bury the lady lovely and pale. Bury the priest in his tattered gown. Then bury the beggar with his shining crown. <laughs> Are you s surprised? I remembered the second verse. Lots of time to think while I work down here. Maybe I can even c come up with some songs of my own. She is sweet as ever. Love checking in on her. She's just such a little spot of brightness in such an otherwise dim and dreary area. I want to point out in this room, this is where we used a Vengefly to jump over to a grub here early. I want to point out that now that we have the Mothwing Cloak, if you couldn't get that trick to work, this is the point at which you can actually... Uh, jump on over there. It's in this room right here. Look, I don't have to highlight it because I got the charm on. And speaking of grubs, we have found plenty on our journey through Green Path. Let's go see what our rewards are. 50, 109, 157, 177, 259. Geo for that. Lots and lots. If you've been, if you had trouble affording any charms or anything, then that is a fan fantastic little stop to make. Back up here in Dirtmouth, we've got a new face here, standing by the well. Pale thing, you wear that nail with ease. If you're in search of combat, you'll find no great warriors in this decaying burrow. I've heard an arena exists somewhere below, one built for our like. Meet me there, and we'll test what skills you possess. I'll be heading down soon. Come and find me if you dare. And here's another familiar face, the one we rescued from the jaws of the Vengefly. 
you there. Why are you skulking around in the shadows? Yes, your eyes do not deceive you. I am Zot the Mighty, a knight of great renown. Tremble before me. While you were hiding here in your dingy little village, I ventured into the dark pit below us and slew a great beast. It had sharp mandibles and atrocious manners. Yes, yes, all glory to me, but I don't have time for your adulation. I must rest and prepare for my next journey down. It seems he does not even remember that we are the one who rescued him from the, the Vengefly King and is taking credit for defeating it himself. That's just great. <sighs> of all the places to end up, we've picked this dreary town. I'd have thought it a temporary stop. Then my husband became obsessed with that old ruin. Now he's spending all his time down there. He argues cartography is sound business, but other than you, who's buying? Oh, I am buying. Have we got anything new? I've got a bit of Geo to bandy about, but I think the only one I'm going to buy is the bench pin. Just, just for the sake of it. And that'll show us. We can see that there's a bench in this town. Oh, well. I hadn't noticed. How about you, Elderbug? I never thought I'd see such a thing. The stag station has opened. That building lay silent since before even my time. Oh, I've heard the tales of the glorious line. A web of tunnels running all through the kingdom. Not that I'll be traveling then, mind you. Whoops. Uh, I will throw up what he said on screen, because <laughs> I, I missed it. Did you visit that temple? A strange building, I've heard, though I'd never dare to journey myself. The braver among us once went there to pray, said they felt at peace within the walls. After a while, they stopped going. I wonder what changed. A young couple's just recently taken up residence in the house beside the station. Seems they're running a map shop, which may excite adventurer types like yourself. She's a tall bug, the wife. I told them take the larger house, especially given they're all empty. But they liked the look of that one. The way she has to bend to get through the door. I wouldn't put up with it myself. Many used to come, hoping the kingdom would fulfill their desires. Hallownest, it was once called. Supposedly the greatest kingdom there ever was, full of treasures and secrets. Hmm, now it's nothing more than a poisonous tomb full of monsters and madness. Everything fades eventually, I suppose. My understanding of Hallownest can be a little vague, but below those leafy caverns is a fungal grove, once home to peaceful creatures, not quite bug, not quite plant. Sounds almost worth a visit, no? Well, there's a downside. The dreadful stench! A noxious odor fills the place. Feeling tired? That bench may be iron, but I assure you it's quite comfortable. There's no better place to collect your thoughts before heading below. Plus, I enjoy the company. Not that you seem the talkative sort. <laughs> ah, I would think I enjoy the knight's company as well. Look how freaking cute he is. Little arms all just tucked in. What you been up to, Sly? I suppose. I see they've opened a mapping shop across the way. I suppose the little competition is healthy. Perhaps I should start to sell maps as well. Was that a little aggressive? <laughs> All's fair in a world made of Geo. Speaking of Geo, I'm here to spend some. Uh, I have been spending a lot, so I can't really afford much, but I definitely, excuse me, I said I definitely want this mask shard. We get the achievement protected for filling up our first set of four mask shards increasing our health total to six, which is quite a nice landmark, I must say. Down here in the Forgotten Crossroads Stag Station, we will find Tizo once again. Eh, pale thing, you use these old lines. Pathetic. A real warrior carries himself to combat. He has no, no need for such convenience. Leave me be. It's the arena I seek. I've already wasted far too long on these cursed roads. All right, he's not feeling too friendly. But it is interesting to see that he's got his own story sort of developing. I am going to go ahead and warp myself straight back to Leg Eater. Oh, look, we've updated our map. We can see some benches around here and there. 
Now, we have got double the charm notches that we started with to play around with right now. I am very fond of this setup. Increase our strength, increase the geo we get, and gather it all up. It will decrease the amount of soul that we have to play with, but I think that's a worthwhile exchange for the time being. And head straight back down the way we came. Be super careful when descending this room. There is acid everywhere. It is so easy to fall in. Let's go ahead and test our increased damage off on that guy. Increased health, increased damage. We are super upgraded now. We have got all kinds of just abilities and extras under our belt now. It's just that satisfying feeling of becoming stronger. We've got a huge metal door here that seems to be shut absolutely tight and no switch in sight. We may bear it in mind, but it doesn't look like it's opening anytime soon. No! Okay, well, that's one way to do it. <laughs> I got hit by the enemy, uh, who only did one damage, and the invincibility frames made it so I didn't get hit for two. And we're just doing it again. That is, apparently, that's the tactic of the day. Just kidding, don't do that. Was smart of me. Ow! Okay, this is fine. <laughs> Everything's fine. Off in this room, there's not going to be much for us now. But we do see an interesting grave. We remember the Elder. Some sort of either a grave or a shrine. Definitely worth bearing in mind for later, though. No, why did you respawn? Oh, dear. I'm in trouble here. Okay. <laughs> uh, be careful. Be careful. Oh, gosh. <laughs> ah! Oh! Oh, hello. Aha! Tiny steps of a tiny creature. You got the look of an adventurer. We've so much in common. Searching for dangerous places, eh? Well, right now I actually think I just need to heal. Well, you're on the right track. A long-necked critter warned me of a tribe deeper down. Warrior sorts. So she says I'm... So she says, and I'm itching for some serious combat. Keep sharp, my adventurous friend. Stay alive and let's meet again on the road ahead. Let us indeed, Cloth. Cloth is quite a favorite character of mine. I am nervous right now. I am not used to being down at two health with no... Uh... <laughs> nothing, no soul to heal with. Uh, I could bench warp back up to Leg Eater right now, but I feel... And even though I'm not in immediate danger... Uh, I feel like that would be cheating, because the only way to get back to Leg Eater right now would be to, um... Okay, don't, don't, don't be, don't be too risky. Uh, the only way back to Leg Eater right now would be back through those explosive spore guys. And, uh, I don't think I'd survive that path, so we're just gonna, I'm just gonna play it. Huh, okay, I see a guy who can give me some soul. Step away from the ledge. Oh, and a soul totem! Oh my gosh! We're saved! Okay! I kind of regret having <laughs> Fragile Strength on right now because that took fewer hits. And those fewer hits got me less soul because I don't have Soul Catcher on. But, whew, it's workable with. <laughs> we, we are okay. Hey! Another familiar face. Well, same to you too, Hornet! Here ends the Pilgrim's Way. Hallownest's heart lays open before you. Proceed onward to share in its glory. Well, seems our journey is reaching something of its climax. That is going to be all for today in the next episode. We may find out just what that's all about, or we may, we may not. Mysteries stand before us, and which ones we solve are entirely up to us. If you liked this video, thank you so much for watching. But before you hit that like button, just know that if you do, I will overcharge you for everything that you wish to buy and just bleed you dry of all your geo. Just see if I don't. See you guys next time.